Well, I had a little bit of a fire in the uh, old Miller TIG machine. I searched the serial number and come to find out it was built in 1974. It served me well for a lot of years, but I was having an increased difficulty welding aluminum. And uh, the job that finally burned it up was uh, heavy aluminum antenna mast made out of quarter inch and I followed one weld after another and probably exceeded, exceeded the 40% duty cycle on the machine. So she caught on fire, blew the circuit breaker to the garage and next thing I knew I was fighting the fire and I discharged the fire extinguisher in one of these holes and put the fire out. But I was without a welder so I finally broke down and replaced it with a more state-of-the-art Miller package system. It's the Dynasty DX200, or 200DX I should say. And I bought the Coolmate package in the running gear, and I bought the uh, uh, water-cooled 250 amp TIG torch. And uh, ran into some very uh, early on uh, misunderstandings of the product. Um, took me about a day to work through some of those and I made this video because I just didn't think that there was enough good information out there to get this machine hooked up. The manual is terribly poorly written. So I'm going to show you this machine and then my next video or two will be about specific settings for specific processes. First thing that I noticed was that the machine did not come with a stick lead. I suppose that's fine. I had my uh, previous stick lead, but it was set up with lugs like this, terminal lugs that bolted onto the face of the old machine. So I had to go out and purchase a uh, dense connector. Well the first concern that I had was that this machine came with a real nice 250 amp water-cooled TIG torch and it's a significant improvement over the old air-cooled torch that I was using in the other machine. It doesn't get hot at all one of the big things I was not anticipating was just how noisy the Coolmate running package is. A um, little water pump in there and the fact that when you tilt it back to wheel the machine around, the cap leaks. wasn't planning on that because now you get sticky antifreeze all over the shop floor. Um, but I was not prepared for how noisy this was. I was also not prepared for how short the grounding lead is. Fortunately, I kept my old grounding lead. So my old weld uh, ground lead has these old swedged on lugs too. I'll be buying a couple dense connectors to make an extension for that so I can weld a little further from the machine. On nice days I'll be able to weld outside and still keep the machine inside. And my first job that was awaiting was not a TIG job. It was actually a stick job and I did not have one of these dense connectors I mess, must have misread some of the packages. Well, fortunately, my old stick lead was undamaged, but it had one of these Nycopress style um, terminal crimp connectors on there. Well, that won't fit to the dents, so I had to go out and purchase a, uh, a dents adapter. I cut the end off the welding cable, and now I can plug my old stick lead in there, and I got plenty of stick lead now to to use the machine as a stick machine. Stick machine process is pretty straightforward. It's simply a matter of turning the machine on and selecting stick and selecting output to on and setting your amperage. That part's really simple. Um, the TIG side of it, not so much so. So the back side of the machine is fairly straightforward. The instructions for hooking up the electric are actually quite easy. It's just simple. Pick the two leads, or if you happen to have three phase, pick the three leads that are power and get them plugged in. The gas plugs in conventionally in the back. And disappointingly, the pump for the cooling system is only 110 volt, and they've got a separate cord. Why they didn't piggyback that into an outlet on the machine itself? So you could reduce the number of cords. I'm constantly fighting the number of cords in my shop to one less cord is beyond me. So I may pull a leg out of this power lead and put an outlet here just so I don't have to have this cord draped around the draped around the shop. So the front side of the machine over here is a little bit different. Oh, the, the other interesting issue, the main power switch is on the back of the machine. 
Well, that kind of keeps you from being able to put the whole machine up against the wall. It does make a lot of noise when it initially starts up. Just humming and buzzing and clicking. That's just part of it. There's been a couple other people put videos up that complained about that. It's not really a complaint. Uh, it's the reality of an inverter-based machine. Well, the first issue I had was how in the heck to hook the torch up. And I, I wasn't expecting the coolant system to plug into the torch handle at the dense connector. But it does. And the... Uh, the airflow is actually the black line. Nowhere in the manual does it tell you that, but it's right hand threaded. It's the only one of the three that are right hand threaded. The two water cool supply and return lines are actually left hand threaded and they're designated by the little saw marks in the flats on the nuts themselves. So those are left hand thread. One's out cold water to the torch, one's back in hot water returning to the tank and the air cooler for the uh, cool mate. The particular package that I bought spent an inordinate amount of time talking about fingertip control. If you're wearing heavy welding gloves, using this little rotary dial as fingertip control is going to be a challenge in manual dexterity. Most of the manual for the DX package is written to utilize these programmable ramp up to welding amperage and ramp down to final amperage type settings. And they're all based on one momentary contactor. That's one thing to do with welding gloves on. I don't have the manual dexterity to use this rotary switch to control on and off amperage. Uh, maybe some of you do, but when I'm trying to feed and maintain a torch distance from the material without tungsten inclusions, I can't do that. So bad design on Miller's part, but they were able to un unload about a $200 fingertip control system to me, which is probably going to sit in the toolbox until I decide to sell it on eBay, and I'm going to have to pop for a style that I'm anticipating to use which is just a single momentary contactor that works on the torch. The torch head itself is really nice. Ergonomically it's significantly smaller than my previous torch heads. Um, it runs significantly cooler although you can see there's a little blue in there from my TIG attempts last night. To use this machine for simple stick welding is fairly easy. It's on now. You select polarity and as you do it jumps it DC to AC and then it's already set on stick so it's either TIG or stick as you page through and selecting on and boom you dial in your voltage this shows the open circuit voltage and this is your actual welding amperage I'm sorry your open circuit voltage and your actual welding amperage and it goes all the way up to 200 and all the way down as low as 1 amp so I don't know what you could weld with one amp with a stick, but uh, that's pretty straightforward. And if you're familiar with stick welding, your stick weld amperages that you're used to using on certain materials with certain weld rod is going to transfer to this machine quite well. So given the sophistication of this machine, I was initially at a loss for where to set it. Uh, the manual gives like two... <laughs> possible setups, one for stick and one for TIG, and uh, this is not a video, this is a disclaimer, this is not a video about how to weld. If you want to learn how to weld, go watch Jody on uh, WeldingTipsAndTricks.com or watch Mr. Keith Fenner um, work his magic on some of his repairs. Um, this is simply about how to set this machine so that you can be in the ballpark for where the amperage should, should be and whether or not the frequency or uh, cleaning balance or the pulse feature works for your particular application is just a matter of experimentation with the specific materials you're working on. But here's what I came up with. 